Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, it's Wendy Kaladel here again and we are back with part two of the um, Emotional Health Conference and hope that you find this part two uh, enjoyable and informative and supportive just to help you realise again you're not alone with any thoughts and feelings that you may have with regards to um, emotional health or thoughts or feelings that you maybe find a little unhelpful but I hope it inspires you and I will speak to you at the end of this recording. Enjoy. Okay, there we go. So, okay, so let's, I'll, I'll read her question. It says, I find I self-sabotage after a certain time of doing well. Usually after a month, then I make it, I, it all crashes down, mostly due to not feeling good enough and my past issues come back and I get caught up into the self-loathing, blaming myself for all the bad that has happened in my past and getting caught in major depression, which, which makes me turn back to old habits, um, like drinking to forget. I tried journaling and doing it in the morning, but always found I had nothing to write. How do you start when you don't understand your own feelings and whatnot? Well, firstly, it's great that you keep trying. You have a really strong part in there and that's what, what you want to try and connect to. I think equally, it's there's just patterns, uh, protective patterns that you've fallen into to protect yourself, it sounds like. And you probably know that yourself. It's just, you get so far and there's probably subconscious things that are being triggered inside you. And, you know, there could be all sorts of all sorts of things going on there. Invariably, they're not as bad as you imagine them to be. So, again, I would maybe just encourage you. It's, it's completely natural, like I said at the beginning, to open up a, a blank lined piece of paper and go, I have nothing to write. I would even write, I have nothing to write. What the heck was that Scottish woman talking about me having to write a journal for? I don't even know what I'm going to say. Why do I keep self-sabotaging? So it's literally, I think what can sometimes happen and it's really common and normal is people open up a journal and they go, what am I supposed to write? This is not about that. This is about those thoughts, fears and feelings that you just mentioned. And just stepping out on faith a little bit, keep the journal super safe. Go into the locked bathroom if, you, you know, if you're in a relationship and got a partner. You know, just uh, just um, you, there's obviously a, a younger, more um, vulnerable part in there. And I talk about parts. And when I talk about parts, I'm talking about sub personality parts. You know, we have our, our our daughter part, and we have our professional part, and we have our mother part, and we have all these different parts with us, and they all have their own needs and wants and wishes. It's it feels like to me the way that you're talking is that there's a vulnerable part in there. And when you make these changes, it is scared of what those changes might mean. So what this is where the journaling is really extra supportive and to help you get a little bit of um, uh, feedback and comfort as to what might be going on underneath the surface. And once you start open up that dialogue, and as I say, just start with a very, even half a page, even three lines, even one sentence, you know, d just make it as small as you mean to do it. And then you'll see that you'll start to feel more comfortable. It was very difficult for me to journal when I started because my mother was a very toxic woman when I was growing up and and she used to when I did a journal at one point she she read she got my journal read out loud and humiliated me and mocked me about what I'd written so it was very hard for me to start writing and feel safe to do so especially my inner thoughts and feelings so I get you if you open up that page and don't know what to write there might be might have been an incident where somebody has shamed you or mocked you or ridiculed you and you feel some hesitancy so I'm just putting these ideas out there I don't know if anything resonates with you in, in that regard but if you can trust the process and try and revisit it a little bit again but start really small and just give yourself you know just have compassion for the fact that you know there is a part there that's scared and that's why there's sabotage but equally give yourself credit for the strength that you have for keep coming back and trying did anybody else almost almost 
get emotional there. My goodness, Wendy, thank you so much for that. I I I know that's that's Trina's like, yes, this, oh yeah. And she also oh, <laughs> thank you so much for, for sharing that. And thank you, Trina, for for sharing and being vulnerable. Um, we're gonna bring on uh Dana Swartz. She um she's been here with us for quite some time. Um Dana, where are you? Do, 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 do. Okay. Oh. I've got my doggo on my picture because I my webcam is hidden in my laptop and I don't want to open it up. Oh, it's all good. Um I just can't see you, but awesome. Um please go ahead and ask ask Wendy how how could she help you? I feel like you kind of addressed in Trina's question because my thing is I've got this all or nothing complex, you know, like if I can't jump in and do everything, then I'm held, I hold myself back and don't do anything or do everything half ass, which doesn't work either. And I know that, you know, fake it till you make it kind of stuff. Um, but that's what happens. I'll jump in fully and then just slowly wind down and then stop. And then I'm too scared, I guess, to continue to try. Yeah. Mm. Well, again, I just want to commend you for being here, first of all. Okay. And when I say that, how does that feel in your body? I don't know. Right now I'm feeling emotional, just thinking about it and saying okay. it out loud. So, so hold on to that emotion because there's a wee part of me that's scared. You know, there's a little part of me that's so scared. And we've all been there, haven't we? We've all been there where we want to do, we're all or nothing. That's exactly what I was like. I was, a had to be 100% perfect or I was a failure. You know, there was no in between. And it's exhausting carrying that weight and that, that thought on our shoulder, that, that level of perfectionism. Now, what I found is that for that part, if we call that a perfectionist part, it's a beautiful part at its core because what is it trying to do is to protect you. You've been hurt in the past. You've been shamed, you've been put down upon or whatever. I don't know what has happened, but that part has evolved to protect you. Um, but um, it ends up turning against you because, and, uh, you know, making you miserable because you can't attain the levels of perfection that you put upon yourself. So this is where just starting really, really slowly, acknowledging that you're here, you're here, aren't you? And that's awesome. And that's where we start with. And it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there. You're on the road. You're on the right road. Miguel's amazing. He'll you know, he's not going to leave you. Again, if people have let us down and disappointed us and, and shamed us and humiliated us and we'll take comfort in something, we'll hide in something, you know, and that could be food, it could be, it could be workaholism, it could be alcoholism, it could be all sorts of different things, you know. So what we're learning to do is something has brought you here to this point. Something is saying, yeah, okay, I get so far and then I self-sabotage. It, it, it's it's a very common and normal thing to happen. And it's just a, a reaction to perhaps what's happened in the past. And this is where by just, it's gonna feel weird opening a blank piece of paper that's lined and start to, to hear yourself. But if you can just do that, even just a couple of sentences and a couple of lines, you'll start to hear you. You'll start to hear what's the, the vulnerable, frightened parts of you that are there and get the answers to, to that question. But of course, what we do is we end up beating ourselves up so much, we just feel that we want to hide, we want to be invisible, we don't feel worthy enough, we feel like worthless. I know I've been there, I felt like, you know, like I was, you know, would anyone even notice if I wasn't around? I, I, I questioned whether life was living many a time when I was bedridden. Would my family be better off without me? But there's this beautiful part in you right now that's got you here. And that's the part that we're talking to. And that's the part that we need to hear more of, which you will hear more of and has the most innate wisdom behind it too. And you can tap into that through the journaling. And I know it sounds like a sort of cop out to say journaling, but if you can just, it literally saved my life. You know, it allowed me to, to understand what was happening on the deeper levels. And of course, we're trying to use, even if we get into a, a physiological, biological perspective, and we think we're thinking with our with our left brain or left brain analyst, like, why am I doing this? It seems illogical. It's invariably because emotionally, deep down, there's some there has been maybe mistreatment or perhaps small T trauma, large T trauma. We don't know, but we will start to know, and we'll do so in a really slow, safe way. But invariably, that's hidden, that's deep down, and there's a part of us that's super scared to even go there. So we don't. We switch off from it. But it doesn't go away. It just stays festering and it comes out in these kind of 
you know, a self-sabotaging behavior. I have this thing with my, one of my coaches that when I'm about to grow into another level, I'm about to stretch, I can feel my nerves, you know, and I, I, and I know because I start to resist to do my journaling. That is my, I'll say to my kids, oh, I'm obviously about to grow again. I don't know if I want to grow again, but I'm growing again because I'm resisting my journaling. And it's, it's an indicator to me that I need to keep journaling because there's parts of me, there's more, invariably it's a younger part of me that doesn't perhaps have the language. If you think children up to the age of two, they don't have language, do they? So when you were two years old, you were just a feeling sensory little being. You were just picking up on the environment. And of course, you started to develop language and at five years old, you went off to school. But, you know, you, you know, there's a lot of uh, physiological elements and things going on subconsciously, which is why you might not understand it. But you will get to understand it the more that you can actually just increase that dialogue with yourself in a safe way. Keep that journal hidden. Don't let anyone ever look at it. If you're in a relationship, what I say to my women is just say that you're writing about your body. Don't say you're writing about your emotions. Nobody's interested in reading about other people's bodies, but they're really interested about emotions. Have you noticed that? Um, so again, make sure that you get clear on what your vulnerable parts need to feel safe to start exploring very slowly and very gently. And then you'll start to build up this trust with yourself. Then you'll get the answers to the questions that you have. Yeah, I feel like... Um like I've journaled before and I like doing it. I like the practice of it. Um, but I think that the key is continuing to journal when things start to really go downhill because I'll do it when things are going well. I'm like, yeah, I'm journaling, this is so good. And then I just like, I have my journal in front of me because I'm taking a few notes now. And I noticed that my last entry in here, that's when my weight started to go back up. Yeah. And it's just, that was, wow. Because I think I just stop. I don't want to do it. I don't want to explore those things. And it's completely natural, isn't it? Because we don't know what that means. We get scared to go, well, if I did find out this, what would I do with it? Well, again, I say to that part of you that's scared, you don't have to do anything with the information or realizations that you have. You just go, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? And you'll do, you just trust yourself to, to know what to do if you need to do anything. But exactly, you stopped journaling because something was starting to come up. And this is why journaling is, is, is a beautiful process. It's very safe. And I say that to, to the vulnerable parts of you. It's a very, very, very safe process. But you have to just trust the process. Trust the process. And if you keep doing it, you'll, you'll be surprised. It's never as bad as a part of you imagines it is. And that's why you stop. Because perhaps somebody has projected onto you that there, I know somebody projected onto me, my family projected onto me that I was big and bad and ugly. And I just thought, oh my God, what am I going to find if I keep digging down within myself? And I'm like, I'm actually quite a nice person. I'm not the bad person that they projected me to be. But that didn't mean to say that I had, it was easy going there. It, it wasn't. I had these, these struggles and these blocks and major disease and major illness because I was resisting going there so much because I thought it was, you know, all that they said. So perhaps there might be that something going on in there with you, you know, and it's awesome that you were journaling before. So again, give yourself credit for that. It's awesome that you're taking notes now. I, again, even after this call ends, I would encourage you to come back into your body, feel your emotions, feel if you want to cry, feel if you kind of like feel relief, feel if you're like, okay, do you know what? I'm just going to give myself a realistic goal and, and, and prepare myself that this will happen again. I, I will feel a block. I will feel a self-sabotage, but what you need to do at that time is going to feel counterintuitive. You're going to have to hug yourself. You're literally going to have to get a furry blanket, a teddy bear, do a butterfly hug and hug yourself at that point, because invariably we've been abandoned and rejected and neglected when we did have needs or we did feel emotionally in the past. And that's why we switch off from ourselves. And that's why we self-sabotage, in my opinion. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dana, for sharing. Um, it's almost like it's almost like every time we come, I imagine it like a like a bit of a dark tunnel. You know, you're standing on this side. The tunnel is not that long, but it's very very dark. And on the other side, you can see what you're after. And maybe that what you're after is just lack of of of, of emotional pain. Mm -hmm but it's dark and it's scary and you know that you're going to have to walk through it. And so we keep reliving this, this cycle where we come right up to the, to the, to, to where the tunnel begins. And then we're like, Oh no, maybe not. And then we go back. 
And, and for as long as we keep doing that, we're, we're not going to get to the other side. It's precisely when it gets the darkest that, you know, you're almost on the other side. So you got to, you got to keep walking. And it's going on that blind faith, isn't it? You know, just really learning. And I think that's where these tools are really helpful to help you go feel the fear and try and rather than chastise yourself and beat yourself up for the fear, try and have some compassion for the fear. I mean, it feels counterintuitive. Like we're probably all like, oh, I shouldn't be having that feeling and I shouldn't be feeling this way is what is normally the chat. But actually, if we can say, oh, I've noticed that I'm feeling sad or I notice that I'm feeling upset. And rather than going for something to numb ourselves, it passes, it does pass. And as you say, going up to the tunnel, just try and just take that one step in, yeah. you know, and just have faith. You're literally going on blind faith here that you have the strength, you have the courage, you have everything within you. And ironically, everything that you were seeking for lies within you, just that you're not sure how you haven't, you know, had the tools yet to get yourself back to yourself, which is going to give you the confidence to keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, speaking of fear, um, Melody, are you still here? Um, she asked a really good question. Um, I'd like to see if... Yeah, I'm here. Yay. Okay. Let me, <laughs> let me highlight your video. Where are you? Somewhere oh. in the sea of faces. Hi, Wendy. I'm there. Hi. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Please go right ahead. So I super resonate with a lot that you say, and I, this has been really wonderful. I just want to say that... Um, Stream of consciousness journaling has absolutely changed my mind or changed my life in a lot of ways. And, you know, recognizing that giving some space to allow those injured parts of you, the microphone has been something that has been both powerful and very painful for me as a person through my journey. So thank you for that. Um, but the thing that you said was that change in equal measure, we seek it out and fear it. So if you're feeling that growing edge coming, What's, do you have any strategies on how to kind of bring congruence back to that? Where you're like, I want to change, but I'm scared of change. How do you bring those two sides together? Or, you know, what kind of strategies or questions can you ask yourself in your journaling to help with that? Sure. Well, first, it's awesome that you're doing the journaling and you can really feel the emotion. So well done for staying with the emotion. And that's a little part of you that, you know, just needs a hug right now. You know, so that you feel that you can be so open in, in this space. Um, Everyone knows I'm the crying coach. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a normal, healthy response. And I, I think we're, we're all, we've all been brought up never, never to, 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 to you know, certainly in Britain, the stiff upper lip, you know, you know, you don't, you don't cry, you don't feel anything. And um, so, so sorry, what was your question again? Um, so when you feel that change coming, like you said, when you were feeling that resistance to, to, to go deeper because change is coming, but you feel that you want that change. Do you have any suggestions or strategies on how to bring those two, like the want to change and the fear of change together to make that process a little easier? Sure, absolutely. Well, I, I go back to my journal. You know, if I can feel it happening, I go back to my journal. As I mentioned earlier, I can, I can normally tell when change is coming, change is afoot, as they say here in Scotland, when I'm resisting going to the journaling. So I'm going back to my journal and I'm putting, and I'm, sometimes it's a struggle to write because I can feel that change is coming and there's a part of me and I know I see a sub personality part of me. If you imagine like we are the driver of our bus, but behind us and all these empty seats are different ages, different stages and different parts of us. They all have different needs and different wants. So how do we hear them all, especially as we're growing and moving into unknown terrain? That's why a lot of people stay stuck or self-sabotage because it might be painful where we're at, but at least we know what it is, the pain. It's pain that we know. But moving into new, moving into new terrain might be might be almost near certain death. You know, it's what something in the body and a body sensation, and invariably that comes from when we're little. So I think if we can provide some context why we're having the feelings, it helps us how to handle it. So for me, if I know that I'm uh, I, I'm resisting change, I I can I laugh about it, I joke about it, I kind of go, oh, I'm feeling resistance, I can feel it coming up, and what I do is I literally. If we imagine that we're all on, on this journey, it's not the destination we're on, it's the journey that we're on. Sometimes we just have to stop by the roadside. We literally have to stop, sit down, and we literally have to hear all our parts. Now, there'll be a part of us, the perfectionist, the pusher, the people pleaser, the strong and the critic, these strong parts that are like, we don't have time to sit down by the roadside. Hurry up, do another whatever you have to do. And you shouldn't be doing this. And then that noise starts in our head. 
But this is where what we're doing is, is almost sitting by the roadside and hearing the vulnerable parts, because invariably when there's a push pull going on, there's a conflict going on of parts or conflict going on of feelings. And what do we normally do is we normally numb them out. But what happens then? They self-sabotage. So if we can just sit, and it sounds like, like, like I don't want to sit and listen to all these thoughts and feelings, but if we can just sit with them, it makes such a difference to, to building up a relationship with ourselves and our parts. And then literally before we know what we're, we're, we're just zooming. Cause when you have like, it's like having a tribe of people. If you've got a tribe of internal parts all on board, they're going to run with it. But if you have half that are like scared and vulnerable and don't know what's happening, they're going to like sabotage. You don't get anywhere. You get stuck and you get stuck in this hamster wheel of a loop going round and round and round again. So this is where, again, just it's what I call self parenting. It's like what you're doing with your, your little daughter there right now. You know, you're <laughs> putting on socks. Sorry. <laughs> on socks. So when you feel scared, you literally stop. You stop and you kind of and you listen. Okay. You stop and you listen and it's going to be emotional and you're going to feel different feelings and you're going to know that you can handle them now because you're an adult but you're also going to have compassion for the fact that those feelings were probably when you were little and you didn't get what you need you didn't get the support you needed or you didn't get your needs met and as i say i'm never here to bash anyone's parents but there could be reasons why you didn't get your needs met and these are genuine emotional needs that you've have left you feeling open and vulnerable and when you are about to move into new terrain invariably if it's an emotion sense thing it's a younger part of you that needs more information. Anxiety is a great one. When you start to feel anxiety about something, it's a feedback loop to, it's a part of me that needs more information. At the same time, it'll be in conflict with this part. It goes, no, you don't need, just keep carrying on, you'll be fine. Or, or don't be a wuss or, you know, uh, don't stop doing, you know, and then you've got conflict. But if you can just be, it's developing that compassion, that inner compassion. And that's, that's a tough, thing to do but when you can do it you can really start to, to power through yes thank you very much that means a lot i also noticed when um i go back to my journal some of the the times when i'm journaling where i'm at my most anxious or vulnerable my writing is different and also the tools with which i use like sometimes i color sometimes i i you know i i listen to music and just kind of let whatever comes to me happen so that's definitely something i'm going to kind of bring back into into my practice but thank you that was very helpful yeah i mean because you've been journaling already i would even suggest another stage again tune into your instincts and journal about this but it's another beautiful process and it's it, it's a lovely connecting one is they call it um uh, writing with the other hand so you'll have a dominant hand that you write let's say it's your right hand um what we're doing in this exercise is really trying to get you to speak to to to, to little melody so she's maybe like five years old and she has a lot of wisdom, but perhaps she was, you know, didn't get what she needed. She was scared or, or something's happened and she, she's, she's trapped in that kind of emotional state. So by writing in your journal, as if you're writing to her, you write with your right hand to her, like, how are you? And you, with your non-dominant hand, you, and it's going to look really weird writing. You're going to listen to here and it's going to be very little writing, if you like. I mean, it's going to be like a little person writing. Again, there's some, some great uh, books on that called Recovery of the Inner Child, uh, Writing with the Other Hand. If you've already been journaling, you'll find that that's a really beautiful way to hear again what's going on subconsciously. And you can be quite surprised if, if there's a vulnerability and there's been a, a need that's not been met. It can be met, met quite simply by just hearing. That can just often just be enough. Thank you. Pleasure. That's great. Thank you so much, Mel. Thank you, little one. Say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, we have another question here from Ashley um, about not liking uh, what she writes um, and whether she should uh, be looking further into that. Ashley, are you here? Uh, yeah. Uh, there you are. Awesome. Let me bring you to Spotlight. And if anybody else has a question, please drop it in the chat because uh, we're out of questions now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Ash. Go for it. Hey. Um, so yeah, I've, I've tried the journaling thing before, um, a few different approaches. And one of the things was just kind of like what you said, just write. Like even if it didn't make sense at first, I'd just start like, I don't know what to write. This is driving me crazy this morning. And I find like two pages later, I'm like, whoa. Um, I hate reading it. I hate going back and being like what I was feeling when I was writing. And sometimes it's because it 
just was boring. And other times it's like, oh, I don't want to touch that. There's a reason that it was bugging me. Um, is that something we should be doing? Should be we reading what we write or is getting it out the process that matters more? Great question. Um, I think the, um, I, I'll, when I'm working with people, I say, do not read your journal for at least six months. Okay. <laughs> because yeah. there's that, that, there is that critic isn't there? There's that perfectionist and that critic part, the judging part is like, you start to feel ashamed of yourself, that you had those feelings that your writing was awful. Before we know it, we've got this perfectionist going, going overdrive. So it's literally a, a process of just getting what is in our head, even if it's just literally the thoughts. And, and, and the more you do it, the deeper you will go and the more confidence you'll have with yourself, but you won't go deeper if you're judging yourself, if you're criticizing yourself, if you're going back and I mean, again, a minimum of six months. In some cases, depending on someone's got a very strong critic, I'll say at least a year. And then what happens when they go back, like when I'm working with my women and uh, two of my women are just trained as coaches with me. And, and I said, right, it's part of your homework. You've got to go back. This is a year later, go back and read your journals. They found it a really moving and emotional experience because you realize how harsh they've been on themselves and they hadn't seen it before. But if they'd gone back earlier, it would have, it would have stopped them from writing. Yeah, yeah, okay. So okay. if you write as you wake up and then you close it and keep it safe, keep it private, that's another thing that's really important. You'll stop writing if you feel someone's reading your journal. Right, keep it locked, keep it locked away, keep it super safe and trust the process. At the time where you want to give up, that's when you have to keep going. It's going to give you so much information and you'll feel so amazing if you can just get over that, that initial block because there will be one because you've been here before, you, you, you have a, so you almost want to anticipate that you're going to have that part come up yeah you're going to think it as well by the way any parts you have no seriously you don't want to ever chastise any parts they've tried to protect you there's a reason in your past that they've, they've arisen so you're going to you're going to smile at it and you're in your inside your head you're going to say okay i feel you i feel that you don't want me to write anymore i can hear the judgment coming on but we're going to keep doing it anyway we're just going to go on faith on this just trust the process and then a year later, you can go back and read it and then really feel proud of yourself. Okay, great. Thank you. My pleasure. Sorry, you're, you're muted, Miguel. Oh, thank goodness, because what I said was kind of dumb. Um, uh, I, was just, um, <laughs> I was just going to try and invite Katie in here. Katie, you around? I'm here. Where are you? There you are. Uh, um, so I had two things. I have a comment and I actually have a question as well. Um, so my comment, I was just going to say, um, I've always struggled with journaling. Um, I find that I end up getting kind of um, theatrical with it. <laughs> I write, so I end up kind of getting off course. So I kind of struggle with what to know. And I recently picked up this thing called Burn This Journal, um, which I thought was a cool idea because first of all, it has prompts. So it's very much like, who do you want to be in five years? And there's some silly questions and whatnot. Uh, but the whole concept of it is that you burn it when you're done. So there's no chance of it because it says, how honest can you be if you know no one would read your words? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of a cool idea for people who maybe are really concerned about somebody maybe seeing it or like me that struggled with the prompts of what to write. I, I kind of like just these asking these questions about myself and I have it hidden. I haven't, you can burn it as you go or you can choose to burn it kind of at the end or keep it. And I just have it hidden in um, somewhere in our house. Miguel doesn't know. <laughs> um, but for me, I just um, wanted to share that with a couple of people who said they struggle with knowing what to write or maybe that they don't, you know, like Ashley just said, not wanting to read it. Um, these ones, I think that if you feel they're important, they're good to keep, but there also is that option to grab your matches and throw it in a very fire safe container <laughs> and just say goodbye to it. <laughs> I can't find I, I think, I think what, whatever works for, for people just to get that flow going. And, and, and personally, I, I get that. I think I did that at one point and I really regret that I did burn them because, because what it's doing is, is by going back a year later. And yes, you're right. I think the biggest fear everyone has is what, 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 if, what if somebody reads it? Um, but it gets to a point as well where you're so comfortable with who you are and what you think and feel that and nobody should be reading your journal anyway. And if they did, 
you would own it. Do you know what I mean? So again, it's that empowerment thing as well, because I think a lot, some of the thoughts and feelings we have, we might have a shame surrounding them. But what we're really doing on this journey is, is that whole connection of empowerment to yourself, your voice, your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, and really owning who you are. I mean, what, whatever works for you. I would, I would, I would encourage you to hang on to them and keep them under lock in, in the lock safe if you can, only because you'll get so much more wisdom from yourself like there's so much greatness and so many people and they just don't realize it and when they've done that whole process and then they go back and they go wow look how far I've come like oh look how I used to think look how I used to feel look what 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 was going on for me then because we forget our minds play tricks on us you know we forget you, you've probably been in situations yourself you've made massive progress and then you beat yourself up for not doing enough but then you go wow look how far I've come so again I think it just whatever works for people Normally when I'm working with people, I say that journal is, is sacred, you know, you keep it safe. And, and obviously when we first start writing, there's resistance, there's blocks, you know, because we're vulnerable and we're, we're being vulnerable with ourselves. But it's awesome that you're journaling. I think it's amazing. I thought I would do the whole burn as I go. And actually I was like, oh, I want to see where this, <laughs> where this goes. So I haven't ended up ripping out any of the pages. Um, but my actual question. So you mentioned earlier um, talking about how sometimes uh, when anxiety pops up or anything like that, that it can sometimes be because from like when you were a child and maybe your needs weren't met. I find that I have almost the opposite problem. I grew up in a very loving, very supportive household of my family. Um, my mom especially was very in tune, still is very in tune with my emotions. And, and I've kind of grown up always, um, I'm very vocal and verbal when, I'm, when I am emotional when I'm and when I am anxious. But what I'm noticing now as a 34 year old woman, I have a very hard time processing things on my own. I find that I always need to go to Miguel. I always need to go to my mom. Um, and so when I'm struck with anxiety, which happens quite a bit, um, most of the time it happens very early in the morning when I don't always have access to grab onto somebody to ask for, excuse me, ask for help. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to, to fix that? Like, I just find like I have a, I, I suffer from imposter syndrome and I get really up in my head. I take everything very personally and and unless I have reassurance, unless I have somebody telling me, no, no, you're wrong. This isn't happening. I find that I just can get so lost in my own anxiousness and my own issues. And I can't seem to pull myself out of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think I'm hearing that you've got really strong instincts. So you understand what's going on inside you, but it's just how to connect to that part. So, you know, you understand that the, what happens and what you need. So that's really, that's, a, that's a, an important part to hang on to is to know that you have that need and of course we're not never here to bash anybody's parents and of course you were if you're brought up in a loving family this is not a kind of a attack the mom or she didn't meet your need but there might have been an incident for example when we're little what might be in a an incident to some person might have been a trauma to another person there might have been a need or there might have been something where you, if you get triggered then you're needing that you maybe didn't get that comfort at that time so it's to provide more of an explanation maybe why so there might be something subconsciously that's being triggered in you and again this is where if you can journal in the morning totally free flowing journal rather than without that if you can do both journals brilliant but if you can at that time when you feel it and you'll normally notice a time just before you have the feeling if you can try and just slow it down because you'll have a body sensation. There'll be a body sensation that occurs. It might be in your chest or your throat or your stomach. Or it might be your neck, head and shoulders, but you can just feel it rising. If you can then just literally go to the paper and go, oh my God, I can feel it happening. What's happening? I've just felt being triggered by something. What's happening? And uh, what do I need to do? And it just allows you to hear that in a very safe and gentle way because you've got a lot of knowledge. You've got a lot of wisdom surrounding it from what I'm hearing. So it's just connecting that vulnerable part. And as I say, my experience, it's just an anxiety part needs more information. So something has been triggered. It could be a sight, a smell, a sound, a word. It could be a whole number of different things because we're, 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 we're complex beings, but also very simple at the same time. So I, I just get this sense with you that you're, um, you say imposter syndrome. I think there's, uh, you're, you're still trying to find yourself and be comfortable with yourself. So if something maybe uh, triggers that I use the word trigger because it can be a small thing and before you know it you're into a pattern and normally uh, if, you, if you there's a there's a great book by Francine Shapiro called Getting Past the Past it's a wonderful book 
And again, it might be something just when you were small, it could have just been a one event, it could have been something at school, it could have been something with a friend, and something has been set up in your nervous system. So when something is a trigger, then you default back to that same kind of like it just happened yesterday. So again, maybe just explore that, but explore it in your journal, maybe just read about um, maybe there might be something in the past. But it, to me, anxiety is you need more information, but it sounds like a little you. It sounds like like little Katie, you know, has been triggered and therefore adult Katie is feeling ashamed and embarrassed and uncomfortable. Like I, I want to get support, but I don't want to get support. I shouldn't need support. And, you know, there's this, this thing going on. So that causes more anxiety because you have a need, but you don't know how to get it met. I don't know if any of that's resonating with you or not. Yeah, but. absolutely. And even earlier, you mentioned how, you know, dreams are our subconscious trying to work through things. And that's, I feel like that's sometimes I'll wake up at three or four in the morning and it's instant anxiety. And like you said, when you said that, that physical feeling you get, I can picture, I can feel it in my brain. When you said that, I was like, I know that feeling that hits me and yeah, it's like a rising and. And yeah, like sometimes I'll just wake up and it'll be full blown anxiety. And at four o'clock in the morning, things that are very, you know, trivial or not maybe a big deal are like looming and it's going to ruin my life and it's awful. And, and yeah, it's like, I find sometimes like, and poor Miguel, he's, there has been times when I've had to wake him up and I've like, I'm, I'm like, I can't deal with this on my own or I'm going so far. I've, I've triggered is the perfect word. And and yeah, it's, it's almost just like I, there's something that I'm, it's almost like I'm afraid to really look into it and figure out what it is. But so I end up kind of just being like, okay, I need you to reassure me and you just to tell me that I'm crazy. And then that's how I feel better without fully actually addressing why it, again, it triggered well, me. When I'm hearing you talk, you have a lot of wisdom behind what's happening for you, but there's fear there as well. So you're, you, you know it, but you're scared. And I would encourage you, you wake up in the morning, you go straight to your journal. Like that is your go-to, that you will straight to your journal and, and, and have faith that you can handle whatever comes up now. You're a woman now in your own life. My senses is when you were little and it could have been something. And of course, when, when there's, it could be a small T trauma, large T trauma and a trauma has, has different forms. And when you can connect with that, that anxiety sounds like it's got a, a, a little thread going down deep to a younger you because you understand the needs so I just want you, to, want you to, to, to almost lean into it and comfort yourself. Get a furry blanket, get a teddy bear. It feels like a younger you that's needing that comfort at that time. And don't have any shame surrounding it. It's beautiful that you're on here sharing it. You're really helping a lot of people by sharing this thing. We can put all this judgment upon ourselves, can't we? Like to, to be this type of person, we have to be perfect. Why have we got this? I don't want to have this feeling. But I, if you can trust me on this thing, if you're up for a challenge for the next 21 days is to and let me know how it goes. Literally every time you carry your journal with you. OK, you get an A4 journal, get a really nice one. I'll send one to Miguel for you if you like. I've got a nice big back. <laughs> and every time you feel that sensation, if you wake up in a panic in your chest or in your throat or in your stomach, you just get up and you parent yourself inside you. We're going to create this internal parent. It's going to be, it's okay, Katie, we've got this. I feel my feet on the floor, right? I'm going to grab a pen and grab a paper and let's just write out our feelings. We're safe now. We're okay. We can see in here that we're triggered. We've got this. We're not alone anymore. Uh, let's just explore this. Like, what do you need right now? Do you need a furry blanket? Because it feels like a little you. Invariably, these things are a little us that at that moment in time felt frightened, scared, triggered, and it's just stuck in our nervous system. We can rewire our brain and our nervous system by these beautiful tools, which are, and I say this to little you, it's so super safe, you know, and you're allowed to be angry, you're allowed to be rageful, you're allowed to be annoyed, irritated, bad tempered in your journal as well. Okay, it doesn't always have to be shiny and perfect, and nobody should be reading it under any circumstances but if you can allow that new connection to yourself trust me it'll be fine you'll you'll be able to kind of I feel like there's a, a, a dis, disjointed between little you and you now you know yeah. and, it, and of course it becomes bigger the more we disown it it becomes more of a thing the more we try to run away from it but the fact that you now is 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 awesome as you're talking about like little Katie, <laughs> that's what made me kind of start to cry because I think a lot of the imposter syndrome and a lot of those issues come from like bullying when I was younger and, and issues with within like my childhood 
you know, so many people have childhood trauma from their parents, which I 100% do not, but yeah. I do have childhood trauma from bullying, intense, bad bullying. And I, as I'm, as I'm listening to you, I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> this is little Katie being afraid to be bullied. <laughs> of course. And this is real. I mean, my daughter's a primary school teacher and you should hear like how vicious the little kids are to each other. Oh, awful. <laughs> so this is real. But what happens when we get old is we dismiss it as like, oh, I should be over this by now. I shouldn't be having this feeling by now, but it's still there. And what little Katie needs is just to be heard. How does how she can be best heard? By putting ink on paper and hearing herself. How can she be comforted? She can comfort herself, but she can also ask people, look, right now I'm feeling a bit triggered. Do you think you can just give me a hug? But of course you've got that push pull thing going. You don't want to keep boring people. You don't want to annoy people. You don't want to be dependent on other people. So it is little Katie and there's no shame on that. And there's all, there's a little of us. There's, everyone has got a little one of us, you know, and I've actually just ordered a whole load of, you know, these Russian dolls that all sit inside each other uh, for my community. I've just ordered a whole bunch of them because I think if people can see the visual, you know, uh, thing of like, there's a little you in there that just needs a big hug and to be told yeah. and what we're doing on this journey all of us is learning how to parent ourselves you know to parent, comfort ourselves and say okay we've got this we're here you know we're what do i need what do you need right now it's literally asking yourself what do i need right now do i need to give myself a butterfly hug you know or do i need to get a furry blanket i had to go and get a teddy bear at one point on my journey because that was what I needed at that time and it felt oh am I being foolish am I being am I ashamed of myself having a teddy I'm like no there was a part of me that didn't that didn't get that at that particular point so for you it was bullying so you've been having a lot of of toxicity so put upon you so that's where you know if you are growing and stretching and, and progressing in your life those things will start to come to the surface because what that bullying taught you is to stay small stay invisible and stay out of the way so you didn't get hurt these, these are the kind of little things that you need to just like be compassionate and say we've got this now and if you're moving too fast on the, on the journey just slow it down a little bit like I was saying earlier just stop by the roadside get all parts on board and just hear like what do they need because when they're all on board you'll be off like a rocket again um, and then you'll be going off on a rocket feeling like you can fly to the moon because you're light and you're not carrying and you're not in conflict Okay, Wendy, I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, that that makes so much sense. As I and you're talking about the um, you know, needing a teddy bear and stuff, as I'm clung to my oh, teddy yeah. dog, I, I I do do that without even intentionally thinking that. And Miguel can attest to that. I'm very like I get upset and I just want I bundle my dogs around me in a blanket and I kind of subconsciously do that. And I never really realized that that was just literally self-soothing and, and giving myself that comfort so and that's now you can't was... make fun of me for my dogs Miguel. <laughs> and that's what I was saying right at the very beginning about awareness you've now even just in a couple of months had this awareness now so what I what I'm going to encourage you do, to do is get more information education get the inspiration that you need to, to to connect to little Katie I think to every woman every person here it's they have a little them inside but normally we disown that part because we're ashamed of it like we're adults now we shouldn't be feeling this feeling so by reconnecting you'll find that um you'll have a lot more relaxation any anxiety that comes up you know that's what it is so get yourself a furry blanket your dogs get, and when when that comes up just say I'm feeling a bit vulnerable right now just try and work but go to your journal if you can keep journaling and journaling and journaling at those times and it's going to be counterintuitive because you're going to want to numb out from that part when you when they come up because it's going to feel uncomfortable but if you can journal it will pass really quickly you'll get even more insight you'll go deeper and you'll start to connect with yourself thank you so much my pleasure. All right, let's. Um, I don't think Katie needs to worry about me finding her journal. I can't find underwear or socks in the mornings. So <laughs> I think we're safe there. Um, we got two great questions, and then I, I, I mean, my goodness, Wendy, thank you so much. We're already um, an hour and twenty minutes into this, so maybe just two more questions because we need to be respectful of Wendy's time. Um, let's bring on Cheryl um, and then Cherie. Because because um, we've got a couple of good questions here. Hi Cheryl. Hi. 
I think my, my brain is spinning right now. Um, I think as I posted in there, my mom is an adult child of an alcoholic. And so um, everything was controlled in her environment. And one of them was emotions, mm -hmm. you know, so we weren't supposed to be emotional. Um, and um, I am so empathetic with everybody else, but not with myself. Um, and so I'm not supposed to be emotional. And one of the things I said, I'm going to need help from the group because Santa used to bring a diary every year and it was something that I should do. My whole life was shoulds from my mother and what, how my, both my sister and I have rebelled against that is if it's a should, we don't do it. Um, so, you know, my diary would last about two days and then it would be an empty diary for the rest of it. So I'm actually, you know, I know I need to dig down and, you know, it took me till I was 50 before I could understand and acknowledge and forgive my mother because it wasn't her fault. It was her little inner child who was reacting to her world. But I still have that whole thing of, I'm not supposed to have emotions. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna need help from the group to just make me journal because I, <laughs> it's one of those childhood shoulds that I'm gonna rebel against. Um, and I know I need to do it and I just need the group, you know, maybe it's another check on our, on our uh, list of, yeah, I journaled this morning. And we don't have to share it, but it's another accountability that I think I'm going to need because I know that inner child is going to be going, nope, not doing I, this. I was going to say, though, but I think if it was a, a shoot for you, then you might have a rebellion against it. So my, my instincts are, if you can understand it, I mean, you've got a lot of wisdom there, a lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding. And, and again, you're, when you said I shouldn't have feelings, I shouldn't have emotions, that was my mantra. It's like, I don't do emotions. I shouldn't have these emotions. And I'm so sensitive so empathetic to other people to the point where I was just like invisible you couldn't see where the people ended and I and I began and well, so are exhausted because you're giving to everybody else exactly so it's not a case of shoot it's a case of essential connection to yourself because as I say I'm hearing a lot of wisdom there again like you have a, an understanding of yourself and, and 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 obviously what Miguel set up and everything is is fantastic and this is just a um, a, a further tool to support you to get to your end goal because you're on this pathway you know you have your your goals and your dreams and and what what was being created here is to, is to support you on that so this is where you can really parent yourself and say what do I need so that I'm doing it because I want to do it even journaling about the fact that you were you, you had the journal at Christmas you didn't want to do it even just and again, there has to be a lot of rage, anger, annoyance, disappointment, upset. And I say to all of you, it's really important. These are not bad feelings. These are all emotions are messengers. So we have to go through a grieving process to some degree when we start to connect with ourselves, because we're all brought up with Disneyland and fairy tales and movies with happy endings. And it just is that is not life, is it? So we're left with this feeling of disappointment, let down. If only we could be better, if only you know, we could be perfect, then we might get our perfect happy ending. So for you, it sounds like, you know, there's, you know, a, a lot of um, understanding for other people, but now you're, whilst you're on this journey, this journey is about you now. And the only safe way for you to connect with your emotions is a way that you can control, that you can manage, that you can do safely in your, under your own guidance. Because like, you know, Miguel and I here, we're just guides but this has to be something that you pick up. So I hear you say you need help from the group, but I know you have that strength within you to do it from yourself. It's just making, it's just almost stepping into the fact, I know I can do this because I want to do it, not because I should do it or I have to do it. It's because I know it, 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 in my heart and soul, it's gonna, it's gonna benefit me. It's gonna allow me to move on. It's gonna allow you to free me because I'm, invariably when we're the type of people that we are, we've carried a lot of other people's baggage, emotional baggage. And what we're doing is we're kind of offloading what is theirs and we're getting connected to what is ours. Thank you. My pleasure. You got this, Cheryl. I'm, I, I, was, I was really glad that, that that's what you said, Wendy, because I was like, that sounds like it would turn into a should. I, <laughs> I know, I was like, no, no more shoulds. 
because <laughs> you'll rebel. Uh, yeah. I, I, I have to apologize. I, um, I didn't. I missed uh, Jen's question, and she asked it like very early on. So, <laughs> if you don't mind, Jen, please come on on. Um, there you are. Hi. Thank Hi. you for taking the time out of your day. Um, so I plucked out four years of my childhood and I went through hypnosis and I've been journaling ever since. But this year my sinuses have been hurting and I haven't been able to journal. Would a video journal work? I think um, whatever works for you to, to allow the, the feelings and emotions to, to be processed. Um, but I'm going to encourage you to pick up that pen because sometimes when we, when, when we, when we stop doing something, it's because we're about to embark on a new level of understanding. I don't know if that, that resonates. Well, so I've stopped because my vision goes blurry or it's double, or I just can't see out of my right eye. Okay. But so that, that right is from the journaling has it or, um, no, um, it's my sinuses and I'm working with an amazing group of doctors to get it under control and I'll probably have to have surgery, but it's a process. So to get me emotionally to where I need to be through this, would a video journal work part-time? Well, what about typing? Can you type? Not if I can't see. Okay. I think you just do what works for you. I think you tune into yourself and trust your instincts. I mean, yeah. there's a, I can hear, see the emotion that's there. I think I'm going to encourage you as soon as you can to put ink on paper because I, I feel the emotion that's there that needs to be ex expended out of your body. I'm yeah. not sure if your video is going to be enough. And I say that because, because it, 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 it keeps a certain level of protection from ourselves, you know, from going deeper. But I think you just trust your own instincts. You, you tune into what works for you. Um, yeah. Even even if you dictate, if you can dictate your journal, you can get these uh, dictation apps. You know, I, yeah. the, the reason I want it down in, in some form, I mean, clearly ink is the, the, the big Rolls Royce of them all, the big granddaddy oh, of them all. Absolutely. But if you can even dictate, so it's a voice dictation, I think you can think all the, the like uh, Macs yeah. and have them. Is What I want for you is for you to have a, a legacy that you're proud of, to be able to look back and see the journey. The video there is one element, so you do what works for you. But even if you can um, dictate it or video, whatever works for you to, yeah. to monitor it. But I'm going to encourage you to be really compassionate with yourself and really trying to connect with little you. Because if you're, put to, you're going to be having surgery and things like that, there's going to be part of it that's super, super scared, you know? Yeah. Well, and it's interesting when you told Melody to ask her little her younger self questions. Um, when I was listening to the hypnosis tapes, because I totally blocked out four years, um, I would write as I was feeling, listening to them as I was older, but I would also write a letter to myself as that little girl Amazing. to my older self. Mm. And it's okay for us not to be okay 24-7. Nobody's okay 24 seven. Exactly, of course. No, no, where we're good. I mean, don't, don't you just, the, the good thing that came out of COVID was seeing all these Polish TV presenters at home with their cat's bottoms in front of the screen, <laughs> things going on in the background. We were presented all these polished, perfect images all the time, but none of us can maintain that or sustain that. And it makes us miserable. So exactly, of course. And, and I think, well, thank you for being so vulnerable. And, you know, you just do what works for you. And when you can write, if you ever, here I'll be asking Miguel how you're getting on I'll be like is she writing yet um I'll be asking like are you putting ink to paper because it's this is this is your journey you're like if, if everyone here yeah. is about you're, you're writing your legacy and and who's to say there's going to be some book I wouldn't be able to publish a, a second edition of my book came out just a couple of weeks ago I wouldn't be able to have written that book had I not kept a journal and I, yeah. and I did do a couple of videos but it was different you know, and I, and I felt uncomfortable looking back at some of them, whereas my journal was different. So again, just do yeah. what works for you and, and just be kind and compassionate and give yourself yeah. credit for being here now. Yeah, you're doing yeah. the best you can and just keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. 
Awesome. Oh my goodness. Um, Wendy, thank you so much. Where, where can we learn more? That 21 day challenge um, sounds amazing. Uh, how, how could, how could we learn more about you? Uh, maybe even join in uh, and just get more support from you and your team. Um, so, but yeah, people can learn more about me at wendyklaidlaw.com or healendometriosisnaturally.com. Um, um, oh my goodness. Thank you so much, uh, guys. I don't know you, but I, I got a ton from this, uh, Wendy, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you can see one thing I got right away is that first and foremost, you acknowledged everybody just for literally being here and for, uh, cause that shows that, 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 that we're, we haven't thrown the towel, right. That we're here, that yeah. we're trying and, uh, and it's not easy. So that's, I think that compassion is so important. We talk about, you know, reaching goals and, and becoming the best version of ourselves, but, but if we're going to be miserable in the process, is mm. that a worthy goal? Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I love, I love your message. So thank you so much for spending your Saturday evening with us um, all the way from over there. If we find ourselves traveling to Scotland, we thank you so much for having me on Miguel. Thank um, you. Have a great evening. Thank okay. you so much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.